Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What Ifs, whatever you want to call me, and I am back. This is part, well, the finale. It's part five, but also the finale of What If Deku Was the Reincarnation of Dark Side. Sorry for the little bit of the extended uh, leeway of a break. Um, yeah, my goal is to do every other day. I mean, stuff, unfortunately, some stuff came up, but um, as always, I hope you all enjoy the video nonetheless. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it because I got quite a bit to talk about, but this is the finale, like I said, because this is a kind of a different pathway for Izuku Midoriya, especially one that is going to be very, very interesting. Let's get into it. Let's get it. Izuku Midoriya has now tested through the entirety of UA High School and now officially graduates and heads on to pro hero work. But we all know he's very, very young, being that of around 16 years old, so there's still a lot of things he has to figure out on his own. Of course, his mother is going to help him, and he's going to get some help from some other people as well, but it all starts with the idea of him either joining an agency or him trying his best to kind of structure a, his own agency or kind of do solo hero work. This is something that Azuku hasn't really thought about very often and hasn't really thought about to a large degree because, well, he really was expecting to actually have to stay in UA High School for quite a bit, but that actually didn't end up happening. So he's trying to figure out what is he supposed to do in terms of does he go to an agency? Does he do solo work? And well, that answer would come very quickly when he's at home because Let's just say his mailbox would be filled to the absolute brim with letter after letter after letter after letter. All of these letters packed up, he would begin looking through all of them and it would be hero agency after hero agency ranging from some miscellaneous hero that nobody really has heard of to people like Sir Nighteye and, and Endeavor. People at a totally different level and he would be looking at them and on top of the experience, on top of just the agency itself, there's something else that would catch his eye, something else to be very considerate about, and that is the price tag. Yes, he is no hero student. He is no normal student. He is now a hero. And he looks to see that there are price tags on all of these hero agencies, and it seems as if Sir Nighteye and Endeavor are willing to fork over the most amount of money, and let's just say this would make him a pretty, pretty well-off person, and would make it so that his mother wouldn't have to work another day in her, or in her life at all. Making that type of money is something very foreign to Izuku Midoriya, especially because we're talking he just came out of being a student. Of course, he could have made tons and tons and tons of money through his intellect, through doing whatever, but I mean, he's really only focused on doing this. I mean, he has helped his mother quite a bit in terms of like, you know, making money beforehand and has, you know, made sure that she was okay. But he didn't make enough to where he, they were so well off that she wouldn't have to worry ever again. And he wouldn't have to worry ever again. So having this extra money for sure would be something that would be very, very, very useful for Izuku. Now, he does decide to go with Sir Nidai. And it has a lot um, to do with basically Sir Nidai himself, but also Mirio himself. Because at the end of the day... He's actually, well, dealing with Mirio Togata, someone who he's actually trained against, fought against, and actually dealt with quite a bit, and he knows that he has some connection to All Might, so being able to work with him, one of the big three members, is something that is very, 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 very good for him, and on top of that, Sir Nighteye was a sidekick of the one and only All Might, so there's no reason not to actually work work with them to a large degree at least to a large extent that's what he wants to do now his first day would be one that he would never forget because he would be thrusted into basically one of the largest um invasions that they would be trying to set up for and that's well that would be the invasion of the shia hazaikai now 
things would have occurred throughout this time that Izuku basically is setting up, getting ready, and so on. Like, Izuku has taken quite a bit of time to figure out what he wanted to do. He even did some solo work on his own, and he did quite a bit before this point. Now, this would lead him to being unknown to the, what the Shiha Zaikai truly is, but they would get information on where this one overhaul truly is. He wasn't actually there when com confronting overhaul, but it seems as if Mirio himself, at least Mirio, was there when confronting overhaul, and they're able to get information leading to them knowing where overhaul is currently at. Now, this would be extremely good information, and information that they need to hold on very tightly, and Azuku is added to the force that they're going to be able to utilize to invade Overhaul itself. Now, Azuku himself, he is that person that is going to lead the charge and lead the way. He is arguably the strongest hero they have. He may be quote-unquote um, unknown to the rankings, at least right now, but Azuku is the strongest, and he's going to be able to walk in and easily be able to create a plan that is not only foolproof, but one that will be adaptable at every turn. Now, the, in the invasion of the Shia Hazaikai all starts with, well, them trying to invade and, get, and getting confronted by many of the villains. But this giant monstrous freak that would come charging at them immediately would be absolutely nothing. Azuku would put him down in a matter of seconds, and he would show something that many others never knew he was able to do, and well, that's actually be able to grow in size. Azuku begins to grow in size and pile drives the guy into the ground, knocking him out almost instantaneously, which would shock everybody. They begin to ask how he was able to do that, but Azuku waves him off, saying that he has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Let's just say that. The invasion would then ensue, and they would continue barreling through as Mirio and Azuku would take the front lines to try and find Overhaul. And let's just say, they would eventually find him. Overhaul would be holding, holding onto Aerie and trying to get her out of there. But Mirio would stop him, and immediately Azuku would be looking for an opportunity to take Overhaul down. But it seems like Overhaul, well, he thought he was prepared for this. Getting people ready to shoot quirk cancelling bullets at them, and even using Aerie as a decoy, in which maybe they can get, well, some sort, or get her to be so scared that Mirio or Izuku tries to block a court canceling bullet with their body, and that would end up being their, their, their fall and their faulty, in which they would shoot those bullets at, well, Eri, and immediately Izuku would jump into action, going to block them. But what they didn't understand was that Izuku, well, he's bulletproof. This is not going to hurt him, not going to change, and let's just say this, what he has in terms of power isn't necessarily what they would think a quirk truly would be, because this isn't a quirk. The powers that he has is from a godly-like being that died a long time ago, or at least a form of him died a long time ago. This right here is something that none of them would understand, and when Izuku would block the bullets, well, they would all be sitting there in shock when his eyes continue to grow or glow red and his eyes continue, well, to show these laser-like things being that of Omega Beams and immediately, well, the beams go crossing, eliminating or at least knocking out all of the people that are in the rafters ready to shoot quirk canceling bullets at them and also beaming Overhaul straight to the back in preparation to try and knock him out. Overhaul would be absolutely injured by this and try to re basically regenerate or try to regenerate himself to a large degree, but immediately Azuka would follow up and so would Mirio, punching him straight in the jaw, knocking him clean out cold before he could even do a single thing more. Now this right here, is absolutely insane because Azuko and Mirio working together, well, they were able to take down Overhaul very swiftly, and this would lead them to being able to help with everyone else 
um, in the base of the Shiha Zaikai, so nobody else would even have to basically worry or get injured to a large degree. Now, this would be perfect in in uh, like the overhaul or the over overall excuse me grand scheme of things because well it was a clean sweep sir night is not dead nobody else is really injured and it all just turns out to be perfectly registered in terms of just finishing off the shia hazaikai now of course there are many other villains to come and many other people that are going to come very very soon or at least there are many people that they're going to have to deal with but that's not the only thing that they're going to have to the only thing they're going to have to deal with of course because this is hero work now of course azuku is now officially and has been officially part of sir Nidai's agency so he does go on some miscellaneous jobs or patrols and stuff like that and that he continues to work with them and his extreme intellect massively helps them like in so many different regards i mean we're talking in terms of the support heroes they if they need any help in terms of planning in terms of anything you can possibly think of azuku is able to help massively like massively and that's just the fact of it he's able to help so much more than you could possibly imagine and azuku is able to just basically continue on his dream of being the hero that he's so, so is, is so sought after in himself right i mean of course everyone idolized all might and everyone everyone idolized the hero to a large degree but at the end of the day azuku right now is the hero that he wants to be he has now become the hero that he so sought after right he has become someone that many would basically eventually idolize as themselves and he would go on some simple things you know some simple mission and mission after mission and stuff like that that that's until the true final gambit of everything that is that has occurred is about to happen because we all know all for one is in prison shigaraki is in prison know that basically their whole stash of nomus are done and dusted but guess what they have one more person that is very nomu like you could say now this nomu like thing isn't what you or isn't necessarily what anybody would think it is because it would be laying dormant for a very very long time and well with one signal it would come barreling out to try and free all for one from prison and this is going to be the true showing of power for izuku because guess what this is something they weren't prepared for something they weren't ready for and this is giganto machia unfortunately they're not planned ready or even prepared to just put this monstrous being to sleep so at the end of the day the idea of azuku having godlike powers is about to be put to a massive test immediately this barreling creature this giant monster would come running toward the prison looking to break his father of some sorts out of prison and when he would try to break him out of prison well let's just say things and alarms would go off that you would never possibly imagine because well many heroes hero agencies and everybody would be called to the scene to try and stop this being from running down and and basically breaking free uh, all of these prisoners now azuku is part of that kill squad to stop that being from doing so and as they stand there ready to fight this being would show his face and he would tower even over buildings and mountains alike and this is something they weren't expecting not even close this is terrifying this is something that they didn't know was even in the kind of idea of all for one didn't know all for one even had something like this and this right here wow it is terrifying but azuku stands tall and stands there waiting and he has no fear in his eyes no fear and ready to actually take down this monster with the help of of course everyone else but azuku yeah he has no he doesn't he doesn't get too scared of what this monster is and when they begin to clash with the monster punching 
and kicking and everybody begins to fight it endeavor shooting his flames and also azuku fighting alongside mirio and many others when they begin to do this it is obvious that physical damage is massively reduced on this monstrous being this is extremely difficult to injure him and is going to be extremely difficult to put him down but azuku knows exactly what he needs to do and he and he knows exactly what needs to happen and he begins to tell midnight that she needs to at least lower his defenses and utilize something to actually put him to sleep in terms of her pheromones in which they say she says that she won't have enough but azuku says that it doesn't matter and to trust him as he continue now he now begins to accelerate and and begin to grow in size he begins to be an extremely massive person and he begins to truly show his his true godlike form as if he's now entered a space and and strength that nobody sees capable of course in terms of raw strength it seems like gigantomachia is still able to somewhat tank some of these shots that come from azuku but on top of that it seems like the omega beams or the omega beams that strike gigantomachia over and over again seem to be making a massive toll on the body of gigantomachia now as this continues to occur the pheromones begin to basically protrude and it seems as if azuku now has a plan to try to funnel the pheromones more and more and that's exactly what he does as if he forces gigantomachia to more or less you know just flat out take and breathe in the pheromones that would make him slowly but surely sleepier giving him the opportunity to just stun him overall with his omega beams and he's able to just flat out stun gigantomachia with as much power as he possibly can and let's just say with no restriction of the omega beams he massively hurts gigantomachia in the process but luckily enough he doesn't kill him because that's not what they want to do but they are able to subdue him entirely as they're able to eventually get as much um, kind of captivity as possible or a giant ca captive place as possible for Gigantomachia himself. And let's just say after this giant victory for the heroes, there are many people out there that are going to be questioning if they really want to mess with this new hero and if they really want to play this game with Azuka Midoriya and he's absolutely terrifying he may be good he may not be evil he may be upholding the peace but he truly is the darker side of hero society some something that these villains will fear forever it's as if a godlike being has finally and truly came to fruition and a godlike being has finally showed his face and every last villain group out there, every last villain that, that just decides to try and either take over the world or even rob a purse from an old lady, well, they're going to be looking over their shoulder no matter what. Because this being is not your typical brand new All Might. No, this is not a new version of All Might. This is something even scarier. All Might would have dropped basically crime rates down to absolutely nothing but azuku would strike fear that nobody else could possibly imagine because he, it was as if he was some flying around god that nobody knew where he came from and no one knew what his quirk truly was the powers that co came out of his eyes the ability to enhance his own strength grow grow in size the intellect and so much more there's no question that that is no quirk. That is a gift from the gods or a god himself. They don't know, but at the end of the day, many villains would go into retirement and many villains would hide terrified of the idea that Izuku Midoriya would one day stop them from doing crime or doing exactly as they wished to do. And this would lead Izuku to helping out even further in different countries, leaving and even going to, you know, the United States and maybe even further further than that, go on and go to Europe and, and other countries within Europe and, and such like that. Now, with that said, 
Azuku would further on and be a worldwide hero but his his main place and his place always will be in japan in japan specifically because he really was going to be the next number one hero and spoiler alert he that's exactly what he would end up being because azuka midoriya is not the next all might but he was the next best hero in line and well let's just say in years to come, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, people will be saying that they want to be the next Azuku Midoriya. But with that said, if you enjoyed, show some love, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. That's the end of What If Deku Was the Reincarnation of Darkseid. And if you enjoyed the series, please show some love, like I said. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I hope all y'all have an amazing day or an amazing day excuse me peace